Fender just launched their new Ventera 2 refresh of their Mexican-made vintage spec guitars. So you know what that means. We have got to compare it to their recently launched American Vintage 2 lineup as well. Today we're taking a look at the Nocaster versus the 51 Telecaster. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. I'm Cooper Greenberg. We are here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and like our videos. And if you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom shirts and other swag, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So, I have a nitro finished. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that... Those cancer-causing, only in the state of California, chemicals that are coming off. <laughs> That's the good stuff right there. It's the good stuff. Um, so we have an American Vintage 2 51 Telecaster versus the newly released Fender Ventera 2 No Caster. It's a 50s. No caster, which is kind of nonsensical, but that's okay. We'll what go with year it. was the no caster? <laughs> well, it was, so the no caster would have been 50. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, so yeah, it was the broadcaster, then you can't use that name, and so there was the no caster, and then it was the telecaster. Where does Esquire come in? Before the, it was basically a single pickup version of the telecaster. And then the double Esquire. Yeah, that's, I think, pretty much made up. It's basically a telecaster. So we got guitars here. We do. And, uh, Someone's gonna I, correct me on I all did, that history right well, now. Well, so it, it had to be. Uh, it was Esquire first, right? I believe so. Yeah, I think it was the single pickup Esquire. Then the the two is the broadcaster that broad sound. That was the idea. And then Gretsch was like, "We have a drum set, and people will get confused." And then Fender years later was like, "Well, we have Gretsch now, so <laughs> we're gonna do whatever we want." Your Gretsch, your Gretsch is now mine. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, AV two. A 2022 release. I use the shorthand AV2 often, and then I realize that's not what people know it as because that's just shorthand for American Vintage 2. Um, this is the 50s telly iteration that they have in there. Um, so they got. Well, this is a 51 telly. Yeah, but like they. It went from American original, they had a 50s telly. Oh yeah, it was an amalgam of 50s stuff. So which... representing the 50s, we have um, the 51 Telecaster and then the 57 Strat. Um, and then, you know, specific years throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s for all different kinds of guitars. Right. Same with Ventera, it is decades instead of specific years. Right. But having the name Nocaster implies that these are Ideally, the same. Guitar. That's why I say yeah. it's nonsensical. The no caster didn't happen in '58, but anyway, I digress. They probably did a custom shop relic back in '58. You know, uh, back when Murphy Lab was going on. Um, yeah. So here's the thing: these guitars are mirror images of each other from the American factory and the Mexican factory. Um, we. Well, yeah, of course. Sort of mirror images of each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We compared <laughs> Ventera 2 with Player Plus. We talked about the Ventera 2 line. Now it's worth, since we mentioned both of those videos, that the Ventera 2 line is the American Vintage 2 line of the Mexico factory. Yes. And these are, I think, some of the funnest ones to compare. Right. They're because the they should be the closest to each other. Um, this is about $1,000 difference between the two of them. And that one is extra cool because you have nitro and poly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you went there. I yes, went there. it's a nitro top coat over a poly base coat. We said it. We said it. And it's okay. And it's, it's okay. okay. It's, it's, uh, it still feels great. Yeah. Um, that's an ash body. It's, uh, yeah. All right. So let's just jump into it. Yeah. So they are supposed to be very, very similar. And of course... They're Telecasters, so they are similar. You could beat someone off, uh, you know, away that's coming on the stage and chop up uh, veggies on this thing. Yeah, and it would still it's be in tune, board. Yeah. you know. Um, so I love it. They're supposed to be the same color. Give me a spin. Show me the back. Yeah. Well, this is an alder body. Yeah. I. Yeah. I don't. I. I think the paint's different, honestly. For sure. Um, they're supposed to be the same color. They're obviously not the same color. But uh, that's supposed to be butterscotch. So this is butterscotch in nitro, and that's butterscotch and poly. Um, 
That's like Werther's original. <laughs> That's um, great. From so, your granny's purse. Maple necks and fingerboards, um, small fret wire, same radius, seven mm -hmm. and a quarter. Bone nuts, vintage tuners. This one says Talacaster. That one does not. Yeah, this ain't got nothing. Can you see the logo on that one? Same logo otherwise. Yeah. Same switching, which is basic. You got three boom, pickups boom, boom. and three switch positions. They both got the knurled knobs. They've both got the um, brass saddles with really long adjustment screws. You ever yeah. think you would need that much adjustment coming on? I mean, I would hope not. I would hope not. Um, but that's Fender's way. They give you the option if whatever you need, wherever they messed up at the factory, you can try right. to fix it. There's, um, it's single ply pick guards, and this one comes with a case and a certificate. And that one, one comes, comes with, with a, old bag. <laughs> a, gig, a gig bag and a hang tag. And you know, to get nitro and a case and a certificate. Um, and ash. And an ash body and 51 pickups versus 50s yeah. pickups. It's about a thousand bucks. It's about a thousand dollars because uh, it says made in the USA, made in Corona, California. Actually, it doesn't. It's got the. If you have seen one of these and you wonder if it's real or not, on this one, the serial number will be on, on the plate. The, on the plate. But it doesn't actually say. I don't think made in the USA anywhere on them. Wow. Except maybe in the cavity. So but how yeah. do you even know? <laughs> I mean, Trust. there's a sticker right there. Trust that says, me, bro. UKCA. UK Canada. United Kingdom. It was made. <laughs> it was the neck was made in uh, in the UK, and the body was made in Ontario. Yeah, know. that's good for me. So basically, you got two tellies and a thousand dollars between it's a them. A tail of two tellies. A tail of two tellies, and I think they both sound good. The necks feel great on them because they're they're both that um, nice chunky neck. It's a thick U. Actually, I think on this one they they describe it differently, don't they? It's like a fat C. Or it's, a, it's a modified V. Yeah, it is different. Yeah. I noticed that actually because um, I I was a huge fan of the fifty two on the first American vintage mm -hmm. reissues, um, and that had a very chunky U shaped neck toward the end. Earlier, AV fifty uh, twos had like a C shaped neck. They weren't vintage style necks at all. So if you know, you know. Um, this, but this is not the same neck, but they are both very They're prominent. Both thick. thick. So if you've learned anything, it's that nothing is sacred, and these years don't mean anything. And we got <laughs> tellies, and uh, let's just take a listen. Thank you. 
So there you go. Great comparison on these two from Cooper Greenberg. Um, if you watch this video, this channel for any amount of time, you know that we typically switch guitars. And I didn't want to do that this time. I held on to this one. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why? Because I like it. And yeah. I want to keep it and make it mine. There's so many options when it comes to a Telecaster, um, especially one that claims that it's butterscotch with the black single ply guard and 50s appointments. And these are both good iterations of that. They They're are. different from each other, not by much, mostly by the map price. But I think if you got a $2,000 budget, that's a fantastic Telecaster. If you got a $1,000 budget, this is a great Telecaster. If you got a $5,000 budget, you can go get a custom shop, Double Esquire from 1975 with a thick U neck and a... <laughs> <laughs> triple polyester finish or whatever. You are going off the deep end, sir. Yeah, we're going crazy. But so which yeah. one would you pick between these two? Between these two, it depends on the budget. Do I have a blank check or am I? Do I have fifteen hundred dollars and it's? Do I buy this one and save a little money or do I save up a little bit longer? You have some of that Cooper Greenberg money. If I got the Cooper Greenberg money, it plays. So, I played so a Sea World this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so after my Sea <laughs> World gig Classic this weekend, vibe. I'm definitely going AV2. Um, this this guy plays for Shamu. I played for Shamu this weekend. So. It was a fantastic gig. Um, you know, I think I would go for the American Vintage 2 because I'm a guitar snob. Um, but So you could go? I'd like to smell it. I think this is an interesting comparison. We talked about in the last one, um, you know, in the overview video, that if I'm going 70s, I'll probably take the Ventera because it's the same finish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the big difference there is Cunefe versus non-Cunefe wide range. Yeah. And I like the sound of those Ventera 2 wide range. I think it was perfect. So I wouldn't, you know, go for the AV2 there. This one, I like the Nitro. I like the Ash. I like the pickups. I just think something calls me to this one. But if I had... You know, if I was never ever going to spend two grand on a guitar, I would feel more than happy with this one. So I, you know, I made a decision similar to this years ago, and I bought a Baja Tele, mm -hmm. which they don't make anymore. Closest thing to it was when they were making the Ventura modified. Um, and that's a cool guitar. I really liked that guitar. I had to sell that guitar uh, to pay some bills, but um, I really liked it. I miss having a Tele, and so I this I'm literally kind of here. I'm actively like. What do I want? You know, I'm going to buy another one. I'm partial to butterscotch black guard telecasters. Um, and, you know, part of it has been thinking when they were doing the American original, I might just go buy a used 52 because mm -hmm. um, I really liked those. We had a custom shop that was kind of like the one that got away from me. Been anxious to see how these are. Yeah. I really like that guitar. I'd probably buy this one um, because I, I like you. I like the ash body. I like nitro. I like this guitar. I like the way it feels. I like the way it sounds. I like the pickups on it. Um, I like everything about it. I like the case. Yeah. yeah, I will say that just the case alone, those G and G cases, what three hundred bucks now? Th about three hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, switching the pickups, probably about two hundred dollars for the set. Yeah. Um, and then sanding it down and <laughs> refinishing it, it and changing the body it. blank out to an ash body. Um, so I mean you. I guess you kind of get, and then you think about, well, is the case really worth $300? Are the pickups really worth $200 or whatever? But if you were to want to build something from scratch, yeah. you would get a higher price point. So Now, that being said, so let, let's talk about Nitro real quick. You brought it up. So let's, let's talk about it just real briefly. Um, there was a lot of hubbub on the internet, and Fender's been, I think, mostly mum about it. They did these, and it was, you know, Nitro finish on the 50s and the 60s with a poly base coat. Yeah. And uh, by the way, some of the 60s guitars historically were made like that. Yeah. It was a poly base coat as a filler, a pore filler for the wood, and then it was sprayed with nitro. Um, and so there, there was much brouhaha, much to be said about like, oh, well, are they vintage spec? An actual 51 would not have had that base coat, but it had a base coat. Um, and it, it varied 
all over the place, as we've learned. If you study guitar history at all, pickup windings varied, hardware varied, colors varied, all sorts of stuff. You know, they're making it up as they went along. So I like the feel of Nitro. I like the lustry look of Nitro. I like the way Nitro wears. Yeah. And Nitro today, no matter where you're going, is pretty much not the same Nitro. There are different formulations for all sorts of Nitro. I feel like that gets kind of lost in the it's, discussion. It's yet another buzzword that people like to throw around. Yeah. Um, I'm shocked, I will say, and I, you know, I kind of joked, but the fact that Fender manufactures these in California and still makes anything with Nitro is kind of shocking. Yeah. Because there's a lot in regards to Nitro finishes and EPA and yeah. safety and all sorts of stuff that you have to deal with. So glad they still do it. And, and this would get my nod. The only other thing, though, is we have a custom shop, Double Esquire, that I picked up the other day that is super heavy relic, and I'm like, this is totally not my bag. It That's sounds an incredible guitar. so good, dude. It sounds <laughs> Unplugged, so good. Just strum an E chord on it. It's an acoustic it, guitar. And it just, like, it's crazy. rings. So oh. between these two, between that Double Esquire, I think I got to go with the American Pro 2. I think... <laughs> <laughs> again, Dark horse. I will say it again. It's right in the middle for me, and I think it's a great guitar. If you're vintage leaning, I think this decision purely goes based on and your you budget. And you can get that in BTB. You can get it in BTB. You know what I wish that they wouldn't have very silently discontinued that I thought was so cool? What's that? The BTB Ultra with the black binding. Yeah. What happened to that guitar? That was a cool guitar, man. You're fools. <laughs> it took away the coolest one. <laughs> I will say, like Chris said, there's always the search, right? Yeah. You know you want a butterscotch telly. You're going to get one at some point, and you play so many of them in here, it's just about getting the right... You know, the reason you don't have one is because none of them have pushed you that far over the edge. I am that way right now with the double-bound black telly custom kind of thing. I need to find one of those guitars. If we could do our own store-spec version of that, and spend a bunch of the store's money just so I can get one of those, I'll do it. Listen, but, yeah. <clears throat> if we get enough people to comment on this video to say do it, then I say we do it. Don't tell anybody until they arrive. <laughs> That's good for me. Our boss doesn't watch these it's videos. It's a different form of crowdfunding. <laughs> um, it's crowd justification. Yeah. You know, and, and same thing. Should, what, should I get the custom shop? You know, even though it looks like I drug it behind my truck because it sounds so amazing and I can't afford it. Y'all just let us know. It is very much worn through that poly undercoat. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, I, I, custom shops, yeah, anyways. Okay, we're not going there. Let's we're not get going into there. it. 20 more minutes of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like both these guitars. I think the Vintera 2s, slight changes from the original Vintera, but good changes. Um, and the American Vintage 2s, if you can find one, they're good guitars. We happen to have some. Yeah. They showed up and they all sold out and then it's like when are we going to get the next ones so they're finally kind of coming back in i think the 51 and the 61 strat were the first to go and luckily they're the first back they're my so, favorites in the lineup i like the jazz master too jazz master is cool so um yeah and if you like the ventera 2 stuff there is strats thin lines deluxes jazz masters Base sixes, bunch of different things. It's not just this. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, yeah. check out our whole overview of that. And we don't have everything that's in that lineup. More will be coming in. So you want to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You turn on notifications, like our videos, comment, and make sure that we crowdsource our justification for purchases uh, here on this channel. That's why it exists. If you are interested in either of these guitars or anything else from the '82 or the Ventura Tune lineup, you want to go to our website, which is alamomusic.com. You can shop for them there. You can purchase them online. There's financing, all sorts of cool stuff. But you can also chat with people. And sometimes it's me, and sometimes it's Cooper, or sometimes someone else. And we'll help you find the perfect guitar to suit your needs. I'm going to go chat right now and get some more feedback from their website of what I should buy. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you next time.